Hello, everybody. This is Atropa Everwood, and thank you for joining me for tonight's uh, drawing stream. Oh, shit. Wait, that, that sounds so. Oh, hey. Wait. Sorry, just a little bit. Apparently, there's a heat wave coming through, which is super, super annoying. So, pardon me if I'm a little bit, if I seem a little bit out of it, I just don't deal out well with the heat. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I guess. Oh, yeah, actually, if you want to see something interesting, this here is actually a 8 millimeter label round, but I guess this isn't really ammo show and tell. Anyways, but although I guess it is interesting because it's actually finish marked because the Finns during the Winter and Continuation Wars kind of used anything they could get. And during the Winter War, they actually got a lot of aid from France and the UK is pretty interesting because they were nominally on the axis side history is always interesting like that but yeah any but yeah so it's a it's kind of really really hot out so forgive me if i'm a little bit spacey and everything because like seriously like it was starting to actually get like nice out, like have the a AC off, could have the windows open and everything. Just leave the window open, temperature drops down to like something that's actually like not horrid to deal with. It was pretty great. But apparently nature decided that we need, oh sorry, something in my throat. <clears> throat> apparently na nature decided we needed like a, a heat wave so yeah now it's in the 80s which sucks because i kind of wanted to go out in the woods and not die from super super hot weather speaking of overly warm clothing though i believe we're actually going to be going over victorian underpinnings i guess underpinnings is the most uh is the most like a refined way to describe it although actually the history behind that's pretty interesting underpinnings is just a fancy way of saying underwear although now it just refers to like the foundation or the thing holding up everything which is where the term comes from like most people don't realize this but historically speaking buttons are actually a rather recent invention when it comes to clothing if you look at like those uh, outfits from like elizabethan england or earlier like say like the Spanish court you know you know how those are clothes are attached right they aren't they don't have they didn't have zippers they didn't have buttons they were pinned pinned on they would use pins so you'd have your uh you'd have your chemise yeah pins mainly you'd have your chemise then you'd have your stays you'd have your farthingale you'd have your bum roll and then everything else would be pinned on top. Your shit. What was the term? The name of the term they used? Okay, well, fast forward a little bit in history. To you had your mantua, which would be pinned on, or your your gown, and then of course your stomacher would be pinned on too. So everything would be pinned on to the underlayers or the underpinnings. So that's actually the origin of that term. Underpinnings is underwear. But of course, they're structural too. So everything on top is based on what's worn underneath, which is just really interesting. So if you look at like all those fancy silhouettes from history, like those looks were achieved by underwear. So underwear actually, I mean, not to, it's actually very important. I mean, I guess that even comes into the outfits today. I believe a uh, last drawing stream we did, I actually, what we actually went into like a 90s outfits which of course if you remember like some of those were pretty they showed a lot of skin and the only way you could uh really pull off those looks is from specialized undergarments strapless bras that kind of thing new bra 
all that all that different kind of stuff but of course everybody knows victorian like everybody loves corsets hold on do i have a corset yes i do which again this is pretty structural if you look at it i mean just look all this spring steel actually i can show you what it's uh so like every one of these channels and in a lot of corsets they actually have two but this is actually a pretty lightweight one comparatively is filled with the spiral steel of course initially they would actually use like reeds or whalebone in the 1600s and seven to 1700s whalebone as in baleen because that was very springy and resilient but of course that fell out of favor and steel ended up working a lot better for what they wanted especially later on of course of course you wouldn't wear this despite what people think you wouldn't wear a corset right up against the skin so the order you got you'd get dressed in was actually rather important so for the longest time the first thing you'd put on if you're a woman if you're a guy it'd be a shirt if you're a woman it'd be a chemise although although for the longest time they were very very similar in construction like let's just say middle ages we're okay we're kind of going way into history i guess but it's it's interesting how undergarments developed too i mean who doesn't find underwear interesting from an academic perspective and before somebody complains and gets this taken off twitch i mean you have people in bathing suits and hot tubs and victorian underwear really is not that exciting comparatively speaking i mean well i say that but for a lot of aspects of the period we're going to be covering we actually know a lot about how it was put on and the order it was put on by nickelodeons you know what nickelodeons are right i mean not it wasn't just the channel with all the cartoon all the cartoons originally they're sort of like a viewer things you look in you drop a nickel and it plays a short scene a video almost with a bunch of picture well it, it was an early like video viewing thing where it just flashes a bunch of images in rapid succession where it looks like they're moving and because people never change one of the very popular things to show in nickelodeons were scenes of women undressing and dressing because porn porn never changes so before, before, I guess before the internet was for porn, it was, but that's how we know, but oddly enough, that's how we know so much. Well, also the fact that, also the fact that the modern fashion system was finally coming into its own by the late 1880s. So we have all sorts of ads offering corsets for sale and that corsets were actually like one of the first garments for sale that had standardized sizing plus or minus a few inches. Of course, 1880s was also around when tight lacing really came into vogue, like clamping down your waist to get that thin silhouette. Because if you remember, actually, where is it? The morning wear stream we did. It's around here somewhere, but we can deal with that. If you remember how like shapely shapely that 80s 1880s 1880s silhouette was it, it was very form-fitting well before you would have like the hoop crinolines give you a bit wider of a skirt so your waist would just naturally seem small once you lost all that extra volume that made your waist look small you kind of were forced to do things manually by tight lacing so and we're we are going to be focusing on the 1880s just because for something as diverse as this topic diverse in like subject matter because there's a lot of undergarments in the 1880s you it's really best just focus on one decade and even a decade a whole decade is kind of stretching it so so it's actually like underwear is a serious topic i mean because if you think about it 
most people, like even modern days, most people wear underwear. I mean, in a perfect world, world that wouldn't be a most, but that there, there, there's always that one person going commando. But most people, most people wear underwear. I believe. I hope. I pray. So it's still relevant. I mean, okay, actually, no, my brain just started to go down a very, very dark path. Well, it depends on your definition of dark. It, it's okay. I, I really should lose that train of thought. You really don't want to hear that. Oh, thanks for the, thanks for the, the subs. That's a very awkward. Okay, so I guess underwear. I mean, everybody's heard the meme about like modern, like about bras, like how they completely, it's like, oh, like things are so much better for bras because it just hides everything and warps and distort it, distorts it. But modern brawls, I mean, that's been a thing long, long before modern brawls. At least since, that's at least since this, the 1500s, I believe, is when stays started to become a thing. At the late 1500s, if I remember properly. Although there's a lot of, before that, we actually just don't know. Which is interesting in itself, because fashion history, there's a lot of guesswork from before written records and before we start to get actual extant examples because textiles decay, especially in an environment like Europe, which is, I guess, where most of, at least most of my knowledge is based out of. Oh, those bindings and, bindings and supports. Yes, we do have those from Mosaic for ancient Greece. We do have those for ancient Rome and ancient Greece from what well, mosaics and pottery because those are actually pretty long lasting showing like women at the gym exercising oh no comparatively speaking to other parts of the world because like ancient egypt actually we know in a lot of ways we know more about ancient egyptian clothing than we do about early medieval clothing because the, well, the same reason we know so much about ancient Egyptian dead, it's a very dry, hot climate that discourages organic materials, and most clothing up till re recently was organic materials, which discourages organic materials from degrading. Same with uh, why we know so much about like ancient Egyptian like mythology, ancient Egyptian mythology, stories magic all that stuff is because it's a very dry environment like like people like we're finding four thousand year old papyrus documents that are still legible i mean even more recently the dead sea scrolls in israel which yeah the dead sea scrolls so we and it's kind of weird we actually know more about ancient egyptian clothing than we do the construction at least and other like construction materials all that than we do early medieval because early medieval we what most of what we have to go on is marginalia from manuscripts and artwork and drawings and paintings which just shows the outsides because they they for the most part they weren't painting they weren't showing people in their underwear on manuscripts because a lot of it was church related So, like, there's all sorts of weird theories about, like, women's underwear in, like, the early 18th, like, the early medieval period, where, like, some people claim, like, oh, no, they, they had stuff similar to bras for women. But vic by the Victori late Victorian, we had, C like, we had department store ads offering all sorts of stuff for sale. We had, like, actual, like, sewing manuals, pattern books. So we actually know every, not everything. We know a lot about that. And we, and if we, oh, I mean, yes, there are 
some weird stuff about women's underwear in modern days, but at least at least we know what it looks like for the most part. Unless there's some weird guys who've never seen women's underwear. You never know. I'm assuming you've at least like been dragged into a department store by your mom and forced to go shopping for clothes. But yeah, kind of getting the purest of boys. But yeah, it's really kind of ironic, though, like, because even then, there's still, like, if somebody say, like, say, okay, say you're, like, the most innocent of boys, and somebody gave you a bra, you've never seen one before. Imagine trying to figure out how it worked. So that's another issue is when we do find drawings of things not being worn, it's like, or even things that are worn, like henens, for example, which are actually hats. I mean, people still wonder, like, how did that work? Like, how, how does that attach? Like, the double-peaked henen, there's still debate on, like, the double-peaked henen is, like, well, this even the single-peaked henen, like, the princess hat. People are like, well, how, wait, how does that actually go on the body? That doesn't make sense. Like, is it pinned on? Is there, like, a clip? How does it work? So, yeah, that's, that's actually, like, if you ever look into fashion history, you start to realize that we really don't know that much about historical clothing. Really weird. But, of course, I'll start with the basic layer, and we're starting with 1880s, which we do, and thanks to horny people with Nickel and their Nickelodeons, we even know how the order and exact way they people got dressed. Minus a grain of salt, considering who the target audience was. So, the 1880s is actually kind of interesting, because for the first time, there was a I believe around the 1880s is when around when underwear stopped being bifurcated for women, which is kind of interesting. S specifically, though, I'm going to be drawing a union suit. Sh I mean, shifts. I'm sure shifts will come up in. Well, not shifts. Uh, chemise will, chemises will come up in other drawing streams. So rather than show something that'll surely make another appearance. I'll show something that was new and revolutionary, and that would be the union suit. Because rather than separate drawers and separate chemise and drawers, you had just had a one-piece garment. No idea what, why she's in this pose, but kind of awkward looking actually but I guess we are I'm going to be a bit thinner oh yeah that kind of stuff happens all the time or somebody like what's like what is this and somebody else like archaeologists will see it and like what is that and it's like oh that that that's a thimble like So where'd that brush go? Okay, there it is. So first, because oh yeah, as I was saying, everybody sees corsets, and if you look at like modern stuff offering them for sale, like they always show, for some reason they always show people wearing it either against the skin, or just as outerwear, which is really kind of just weird, because I mean they were. People did like to have nice looking corsets, but they were still, you wouldn't wear it against the skin because, as I've discussed, this is full of metal. And you don't want, and one thing metal, like steel, really doesn't like is salt water. And what is sweat, but salt water with 
Well, sweat's worse than salt water. It has uric acid, too. And other stuff that's really not good for steel. And, of course, these are expensive. So you'd wear something underneath, if not more than one thing underneath. It's also common to have, like, corset covers that actually go over the corset to protect it from... Well, people. People are nasty. Like, they, they slow off all sorts of, like, sweat and other gross stuff. Like, they, they ooze. They, it's, it's not, people are nasty. So you want to protect your expensive clothing. So, of course, you'd wear... First layer would be a chemise. Actually, you might want a bit lower. Or, no, first layer would be a chemise or 1880s. A little bit earlier, if I remember properly. I didn't do as much research as I... I didn't do as much review as I probably should have. You would uh, have a union suit. Let's say it goes down to about above the knee. Earlier ones, they often had a flap front. But uh, I'm not going to bother trying to draw that. And of course, these were decorated machine lace was starting to be machine made lace kind of changed everything lace used to be no like old like lace used to be worth its weight in gold it was an incredibly skilled it was an incredibly skilled pr process to manufacture lace and it would take hours and hours just to make a small small segment of it of it so so it, it, it was worth its weight in gold, but it's not like it takes a lot of energy to make lace. It's just complicated and a lot of like moving stuff back and forth. So once I found out how to automate the lace making process, lace was used in everything. So I'm just going to lacely boot the, I, I, I guess I said lace too much. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to loosely base this off of a, uh, one I saw on somebody's YouTube channel. So there was insertion lace everywhere. There is ties like right above the knee. And there'd be little frills. Because who doesn't like something that actually looks nice? And of course, our figure needs to have a head because most people do. And of course, ears are always important for people. It's kind of hard to hear if you don't have ears, from what I understand. Oh. Thanks for the resubscribe. Oh, it's an updated look. And I also have, I decided I should start adding to my wardrobe too, because I do a lot of fashion streams. It'd be kind of weird for me not to have a, oh, wait, no, that doesn't go like that. It goes like this because they're bangs. So yeah, it'd be kind of weird if I claim to know so much about fashion and I wear the same thing all the time. Okay. This head might be a bit on the small side though. Oh well, it is what it is. So more lace right here, side seam, side seam. I guess a lot of the details on this are going to be show, shown through different ways of painting. And of course, it's going to be white. Everybody liked white linen. For, well, the real reason, okay, the real reason white was so popular was, well, one, white implied cleanliness, and also because you could bleach the fuck out of it to get it back to white. So this would be very white light, light, lightweight, like kind of think like a lightweight muslin or linen. Well, cotton was very popular. Well, for a while, actually, wool was because there was a doctor claiming wool had a lot of health be benefits for if you wore it and 
all sorts of stuff, which wool is an amazing textile, but if you're wearing like multiple layers on top of it and you aren't in the wilderness, it probably isn't the most comfortable thing to wear. Oh yeah, practical reasons. Of course, corsets were in a bit more, a few more colors, but I mean, I'm partial to black. Let's go a bit darker because that. And of course, we're doing 18, eight, we're, we're doing the second bustle period. So, of course, you need the, all the underpinnings for that too. And of course, I'll have to go back to that and fill in more stuff to actually show all the lace. So, let's do, let's get our figure started for second, for the actual. Okay. Oh, and she'll, she'll be wearing stockings too. Of course, stockings are also becoming more and more. More and more, like, not like the, they weren't exactly the stockings of a, the late, that they weren't exactly like the Robin Hood men in tights tear stockings, if you remember where they're literally just wearing pantyhose. But things were getting there. So let's see. Of course you'd wear a corset. And of course you'd wear a bum roll. Wait, no, no, no. No, yeah, no, I'm getting my time periods mixed up. You'd wear a corset and a bustle. 1880s were kind of after when. Look from behind. Yeah, 1880s were kind of after when. Uh, where was I going with that? It's the heat. It's it's way too hot. Hot here. Did I ever mention how I hate summer? And of course, she's going to be wearing a shift. No, a uh, chemise. But of course, actually, no, she'd be wearing drawers underneath, too. So no, you wouldn't actually see the chemise because it was pretty common to tuck in your chemise into your drawers. And yes. But of course, we might want to clamp in this waist a bit because this is when tight waisting was supposedly in vogue. There's actually a lot of debate about that. You hear people talk about like all sorts of medical horror stories about like organs being crushed and ribs bent out of shape. And I guess there's a lot of debate on the literature, li literature on that, but most people weren't tight waisting that extreme. I hope. And shoulder would be about right here. Elbow. Why does she have her hand up? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just drawing it. I don't actually know what I'm drawing. Oh, she's going to be looking off to the side, trying to get the attention of that one who's just sort of posing. And of course, the neck should actually be about right here because she's at an angle a bit because I want to show off that bustle. So, and of course, I'll, I'll give them, they'll be, they'll be, well, each other. I'll give them, well, I guess I've been, for the most part, using myself as the model for these. So I guess they'll just be me. So I'm sorry, but I guess you're all seeing me in underwear. This is what gets me kicked off of a... Uh... Oh, well, I'm not an expert in feet binding, but that's a whole other kind of really big... Uh... It's fine. I mean, it honestly... I... I'm, I'm sure I've actually 
gone out. I mean, this cut like just this union skirt. Th well, this union suit. I like last time I wore shorts. I'm pretty sure sh showed more skin than this. So that's why I'm hoping at least um, I won't get the. I won't. I won't get the big. Uh, Yeah, I mean, they they can't complain about a union suit. I hope. Of course, this hairstyle is completely not what people would wear, but... And now you realize that I really suck at drawing faces. That's probably, that's probably my biggest uh, weakness. Well, actually, no, my big, biggest weakness is drawing in general. I know how to construct clothing. I just, I just need need a little bit of practice with the drawing part. Plus, that nose is a bit too big for. Yeah, that that looks a bit better. We'll get that anime side mouth going. And of course, I need to actually like have eyes. And actually, my those little side locks on my hair actually kind of start a little bit further. And of course, I want to actually clean that up because I'm going to be painting over this. She's just going. She, of course. Meanwhile, she's just going full runway walk. Like, I don't think I've ever modeled anything on a runway for class or anything else. I don't. Not that I re can recall, but my memory is pretty bad. Great semantic memory, not so great of an episodic memory. But anyways, corset. I believe, uh, if I remember correct correctly, the corset would go down to, actually she has these arms right here, go down to about there, to there. I mean, everybody, everybody's familiar with those weird underbust corsets, but those don't really provide any support, which support is important. So, yeah, so this would just clamp right in. Although they're actually not, people like claim, oh, corsets seem like they'd be very uncomfortable, but they really aren't that bad. Of course, if you notice how in this, I haven't painted it yet, but she has her stockings on first because I guess bending down to put stockings on is kind of a bitch. If I remember correctly, I think you, you're it, you're supposed to put your shoes on too just because yeah bending down on a corset to put on shoes and socks is annoying so kind of want to show that okay and have this like here then of course you'd have a this is a lot of pressure which just causes it to balloon out more for the the bifurcated drawers because yeah I mean some I believe in this if I remember correctly in this period of time some drawers weren't open down the center but until fairly recently it was actually more common to have it be a pair of drawers they were two separate legs with a big opening in the middle because especially if you're wearing those 1850s heavy crinoline like wide hoop skirts it's really kind of, it, it was just more convenient just leave it open i guess this stream is kind of the definition of tmi but who cares it's spreading history and i guess history is full of hard and fast facts like that we'll have some ins insertion lace right there because that would be cool and of course pin tucks although actually it's best just to what okay let's just get these uh if i remember correctly on this on this corset there's actually uh let's see how many holes for the laces one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen grommets. Of course, on earlier ones, these would all just be hand bound holes, sort of like hand bound buttonholes. And then on the front, you I mean, you don't have to 
thread this every single time you put it on because in the front you actually have a busk so this metal thing right here with convenient hook and post fasteners this is actually a victorian style spoon busk too so you just keep it loosened loosened but easy to put on and then you just put this around and this hooks in at the front and it's made of a heavy cotton coatil. It's actually really cool. Corsetry is a very, very neat. And okay, like this. So it was pot. Yeah. So unlike if you've seen those earlier, like those early dramas, like Pirates of the Caribbean, where she has a maid, like clamping her into stays. Uh, I, half the people in here, I'm pretty sure, aren't aren't girls. That's the thing. And then, of course, you'd have the laces right here. Of course, I, I drew too much detail because she also has a bustle, which actually would best be shown as just a pillow sort of tied across the front. I mean, actually, if I remember correctly, this, they would have, like, absurd bustles, so... And, act, oh god, there was actually a really interesting, uh, I did a little bit of research, but there was this really funny account from, uh, around, okay, this is from Alison Gershim's Victorian and Edwardian Fashion, a Photographic Survey, but this, this, this account actually is really funny, around the 1880s for Queen Victoria's Golden Jubilee. Which, if you remember the movie Shanghai Noon, that's the event that was taking place in that movie. I believe. But, I mean, these were mass-produced. And one inventor even came up with one that had a music box in it. So you sit down, the pressure would cause the music box to play God Save the Queen. Which, of course, means that then everybody would have to stand up because that's the equivalent of the national anthem, if I remember properly. I mean, that'd be like every time you sit down, it plays. Uh, I guess a lot of people wouldn't do it nowadays because they aren't that patriotic. But if you're on a military base or something and every time you sat down, it played uh, the Star Spangled Banner and you have to stand at attention for it. So every time you sit down, yeah, everybody has it. So every time somebody with one of these bustles would sit down everybody would have to stand up because she just has to be that obnoxious bitch with a actually let's not make it a cushion bustle let's make it a cage bustle that way we can show off the structure of the corset still and often a lot of uh, corsets would have a hook on top to actually hold on to like the cord for the bustle and also the petticoats too but i'm not going to show petticoats petticoats are very easy to see so, this would be an actual cage structure. That sort of... I mean, people wanted to see the, like, natural, like, form-fitting front, but they, they still wanted that, uh, derriere. So this would be sort of, like, tied to the front. And the things that would do for people do for fashion. And of course, I believe this is also when the pre Raphaelites were kind of push, pushing a whole, their own sort of fashion movement. So drape was kind of popular. Of course, you'd have like the very form fitting front and then a drapey skirt. So, not, of course, these fashion, of course, my memory isn't the, the best on these. So, these fashion trends kind of changed all the time. And because this is me, let's make this corset. No, let's not make it black. That that that's too. We'll make it a light pink. How about that? And of course, we'll just have her. We'll just have her in her shoes already because that that's a lot easier to. So stockings, shoes, 
And let's see if I can actually remember how to draw feet, because I, I, I feet are horrible. We'll go with that, uh, actually, no, that foot should be there. Foreshortening is a bitch. So we'll go with a pink corset. Pink was a very popular color for corsets. I should know, because... Yeah, okay, yeah, that foot may seem kind of on the small side, but it's fine. And of course, her knees actually should be like right here, so. Yeah, so they're just talking back and forth. And I suppose just, just for completion, since all there really is to show after this are maybe a corset cover and a... Oh, actually, instead, let's just show something that's completely different from all these. No bustle, anything. Because at the same time, there is another fashion trend on the horizon that you might actually recognize. And plus, I just really, I, I actually just really like how they look. Actually, shit, when did TaylorMades go into fashion? Never mind. Let's add a splash of color first. Let's just color in the corset so we can give, give it time to dry. This light. Ooh, that's almost a maroon. That's almost like a maroon colored. Uh, but it's not a bad look. And of course, you'd have to, uh, we need that to dry first. Actually, we need to get those stockings too. Stockings. And let's go with a pair of just like brown sensible boots. Where's my brown? Oh, that works. Won't put too much effort into shoes because shoes are kind of annoying. Put a little bit of effort to these because actually, if we have like leather with like matching uppers like this, that could be really nice looking. Like that red with a brown would be very. I think I've seen that for sale. If you ever shop reproduction Victorian Edwardian shoe websites, which do exist. And actually, I kind of love that style, so I I buy more of that style than of clothing than I should. And did I have a skin tone, or am I just going to cheat and use my pre-mixed pan skin tone? I'm going to cheat, because that's the kind of person I am. I mean, this, this skin tone has gotten me, this pre-mixed, stereotypical, quote-unquote, skin tone is what's gotten me through most of fashion school, and I'm not going to abandon it now. I mean, could I abandon a... Uh... Well, no, it just means I can't remember how to mix a proper skin tone from scratch anymore because I'm lazy. That's not me being hard on myself, that's just me stating facts. It's okay. No, I'm working efficiently. That's what I'm doing. But since I'm already mixing this skin tone, or since I already have it wetted, I might as well. Uh... Okay, actually, I think the stocking should be tucked into there, but a little bit of historical inaccuracy is probably okay. Let's just sort of 
get her arms colored in. Of course, this is, I mean, I, I said these are based off of me, but I'll be honest, my skin tone is white, as in like flat white. So there's a bit of artistic license in the, for the sake of uh, saving time. Yeah, transparent is the best way to describe me. So yeah, artistic license. Always a good thing. And actually, let's just uh, get her... Uh, let's just get her stockings. Ah, uh, this paper, it's uh, different than the one I've been using, so the colors are acting a bit differently, too. I need to try and remember what style of paper. Either this is hot press and I've been using cold press, or this is cold press and I've been using hot press. For watercolors, that does make a difference. And actually, I probably could have darkened up that union, the shadows in that union suit a bit. Blue is always a good uh, go-to for shadows on stuff. And of course, it'd be a very sort of wrinkly sort of fabric. It's it's going under a corset. You don't need it to be like pressed. At least I hope you wouldn't be vain enough to press your union suit. Very crinkly, sort of lightweight fabric. So kind of want to just a bit of dry brush to sort of convey that. Oh, Woozle, thanks for the raid. You're uh, doing your RPG. I remember because, yeah, I was, I was actually in your stream earlier talking about Calvin and Hobbes. But, yeah, thanks for the raid. You were... Hold on, how do I do a shout-out again? The lazy way to do it would just be to, uh... Oh, yeah, you, were, you had the... Illust you had the Microsoft Paint thing. Okay. Do I have the bot for shout-outs, actually? Let's see. Do I? No, I, I I don't think I do. I thought I did. Well, I guess be sure to check him out. He does a lot of... He's doing a playthrough of the FromSoft. Uh, thank you. A, a playthrough of the FromSoft catalog. Although... Uh, I, sorry, I get people mixed up in my head all the time, too. Again, hor like horrible memory in a lot of ways. Good memory in other ways, I guess. I mean, I shouldn't be too hard on myself, but I, I, I guess I can be a bit airheaded or forgetful. I mean, I guess that's just how, how, it, how it is. It's not a bad thing unless I forget rent, which is a bad thing. But anyways. Where were we? That cage crinoline, I'm actually just going to be... Uh, Drawing in. Okay, we probably should have shadow and more shadow because this is going to be all like crumpled up with a, the corset. And this actually, a lot of stuff is going to have to be like drawn with a marker. But let's show how this all looks together because we can't just have women and they're unaware. That would just be kind of crass. I would say, unless it's the Victoria's Secret fashion show, but eh, that's a lot of rhinestones and gems on some of those. That's that's pretty out there. I don't know. I mean, I always thought lingerie design would be an interesting field to go into. I just never got around to doing putting in the legwork for it to actually succeed in that. So I'm going to try and show what, if I can recall, what the typical 
quote unquote typical gar we'll, I'll do day wear. Typical garment from this period would look like. Crap. I'm going to use my cheat sheet. Or no, let's let's Oh wait, no, that's that's Edwardian. Yeah, I'm totally cheating here. Don't judge me. Going back and trying to remember, like, what did silhouettes look like again? That's early 1880s. Ooh. All of you listening to, listening to me page through a book. I mean, who wouldn't want to have gems on their lingerie? Although, nobody's going to see it. Book ASMR, just hear me paging through, saying like, ooh, I love those sleeves. I don't think I can. I, I don't think I can. Oh, we could do sportswear. That would be a whole other interesting episode of. Yeah, rogue ASMR stream. Sportswear would be super cool. That's a whole other stream. Well, no, I, I think I talked about that. That'd be cool to do a on like riding goat, riding goat or riding habits. Although that's a whole other thing. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what it looked like. So very form-fitting at top, and a bit more volume, a lot of volume. But of course, you didn't have those hip expanders, so tight lacing was the way to go. Which means that I need to make sure that the figure underneath looks natural. Of course. It's based on me, so... Edwardian would be the next, but I was actually going to save Edwardian for... I've already... Oh, sh... I technically have been waving around my underwear on stream all evening. With this corset. Although, then again, this is... You wear it over a bunch of other layers, so it's not really that... I mean, you're already more covered than half the people out in the street today. Especially since, as we talked about, apparently uh, 2000s, or aughties, as they call it, fashion is what's in right now. So, actually, yeah, that arm should be higher up. So, since that's what's in, actually, let's have this arm go out like this. Is that, okay, is that going to be an unnatural look? There would be a touch of foreshortening right here. I suppose. You, you can tell that art isn't my specialty. My specialty is uh, the clothing aspect of everything. But no, that corset is one I made for myself. So technically I've been waving around underwear all night. Very, very lewd until the fact you realize that you wear it over a bunch of other layers. So and she's just going to be holding, awkwardly holding, a parasol. Parasols are cool. I guess you can sort of see like that uh, Van Gogh, no, it's Renoir, that, or was it, shit, one of the Impressionists had this very, I should remember the painting. I really should. Or was it Monet? Okay, well, oh well, I'm sure I'm sure you know the painting I'm talking about with uh, that woman on the hill and what looks like a... I mean, it was before lingerie gowns became a thing. Lingerie gown actually is not lingerie. It just uses a lot of the same fabrics and is very lightweight, so people just called it that. Like fabrics and laces. That That's like a t stereotypical Edwardian garment where it's all like white and just covered in lace and everything else and was super popular at the time. And we'll go early 1880s on this one. Which, if you're wondering why they have all these, like, drapes, that was because the pre-Raphaelites, they, they thought drape, draping looked really nice. And that's also why 
things were form-fitting, too. And showing the body is because that seemed more natural. So naturally, the best way to show off a natural look is to clamp the fuck down on your waist. Where did my eraser go? Out there. My eraser pencil. So this is going to be tight-laced. And have another puff. Of course, I like puffy sleeves, so... I'll put up with it. And of course, these would be clamped down a... At the front, and be clamped down a bit. You'd have that corset, which would go down to here, actually. Of course, this will go up to the neck. And if you were here earlier, I went into history involving fasteners. Despite these still being called underpinnings by some people. And of course, at that term, by this time, the term had worked its way into like common language. So underpinnings are referred to like the understructure, the basic level of anything, not just getting dressed. So let's go. Actually, shit, should we do? Let's do a sh Actually, were shirt waists a thing? Oh yeah, they were a thing. I did a helped another person with research doing a. 1880s sportswear and I'm I'm fairly certain I remember seeing women out in the woods hunting in tailor-maids or in shirt in a in shirt waists and skirts this is also around when women start to actually get jobs like shopkeepers and you aren't gonna be wearing a massive bustle while tending shop so the tailor-made the tailor-made combination came into fashion, but I've already drawn her in regular 1880s. So it's going to be regular 1880s day wear. Evening wear, you showed a bit of chest. Day wear, it was high-necked. But now I'm just thinking of what colors we should use. Green. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards green. But it doesn't have to be just solid green. Sorry, I I'm I'm really kind of uh trying to remember fashionable silhouettes. Ooh, actually that one's really pretty. That one too. Let's go with a jacket. Wait, no, uh, just, a, yeah, overall jacket with uh, buttons going down the front. And if I remember cro correctly, it's... Yeah, now I'm, I'm kind of just looking at garments I have hanging up, trying to remember. Yeah, buttons would be on this side, I believe. For women's wear. And it was just a long row of buttons. Because it looked nice. Although that many buttons is an, would, is an absolute bitch to do up. I, I, I feel justified in saying that. Totally not for my long years of experience having lived it as a... Kind of old witch because, as they say, forever 17... And let's just go with a... I'm not even... She's just sort of... Casually dangling the parasol. Back. Like this. And it'll be... Let's go with an arsenic green. Which, of course, was made with arsenic. Which means that this is probably in the UK because... A lot of other countries just passed laws because... 
It's it's arsenic. Actually, this would be relatively round. It wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't brush too much against the ground because the ground's dirty. Have it like this. And there'd be all sorts of draping and other stuff. I probably shouldn't use my thumb because that's that's not really good. That's Then let's just maybe have a sort of a kilted sort of bit right here. Which means that this would, I want this to look sort of pleated. Like this. You know, just sort of get that looking like there. And let's just sort of get started on this. Ooh, if we can get that green darker, might need to start actually color mixing. Let's put down a base coat for now. Actually, I might need a... Like this. Yeah, I, I guess it's okay to have that part be super dark. Just sort of get that very, very dark to sort of show that this, well, yeah, that, you know, that, you know, how it goes. And just touch a water here, here, here. I don't want this. This should be a silk, so it's not going to be too rough. Like this. Okay, I might actually want a bit of a bigger brush here then. I can just sort of wash all this. And what I want to do now actually is just sort of uh wait, no, that's that's the wrong end of the brush. Let's actually see if I can get this a bit brighter. Let's go with a sort of, on this front panel, let's make that yellow-ish green. Get that, get all the, down there and up here. And there. And we'll have to leave that for drive. Actually, no, we can uh, cheat and darken some areas here. Yeah, I guess the actual details are the fun part. Does not figure out how this design will look. Don't want to overwork it too much, but a bit of excess is fine. We'll go with a bit lighter right there and there. And just sort of show it the shadows. This dark green skirt. I believe arsenic green is actually a bit brighter. 
So this front panel would be arsenic, the rest would be maybe some other dye or some other variation of it. Like, can you believe that? People just wear, like, garments just covered in poison. And it wasn't like they're unaware completely. They just want to be fashionable. And they had a few, the, the companies would say, oh, it's it's totally safe. Although, yeah, no, no, it, it would still, it still was really kind of bad. Who knew that arsenic was bad for you? I say, not thinking and wiping off a brush covered in cadmium onto my hand. Oh, hold on. I need to grab a paper towel or a paint from here. This works. I guess actually now it's time to go back and fill in some details right here. Luckily, I have markers. No, mar not markers. Pen. So just eyes are always important. There's a lot of mixed feelings on makeup actually in this at this point in history. Some people saying like, oh, makeup, it, there's nothing wrong with makeup. And others saying like, oh, it's, it's horrible and evil and everything that's wrong in society. That, that, that's probably like a lecture in itself is history of makeup and cosmetics. Because everybody knows, like, makeup used to be super popular for going back thousands of years, actually. The ancient Egyptians loved their eyeliner. That's like the stereotype of ancient Egyptians is like the heavy, heavy eyeliner. Which also had a practical purpose, of course, with the, the sun. The very, very hot desert sun. So, but then... Makeup for the ancient Egyptians was actually unisex, for the most part. I'm not. I'm not going to claim to be an expert on ancient Egyptian makeup, actually. But it is a very interesting. Oh wait, no, I probably should have actually painted her hair. That would have been the smart thing to do. Before, you know, like, yeah, let's go with the cadmium yellow. Not the best idea, but who cares? Usually I go, actually go with a more of a brown than a full blonde, dirty blonde. Her hair is actually going to be the color I usually go with. So this dirty sort of brownish blonde or blondish brown. And because I don't wear, do it all the time, but since I like wearing my hair in a braid, she's going to be wearing her hair in the braid, despite the fact that that wasn't the popular style at the time. And just because... Hold on. What color are the eyes again? Let's go with this, uh, green, then, what is it? Brown. Yeah, brown. Of course it's brown. Actually, let's just get color in this one, too, since while we have this brush green. And we can get a little bit of a that in there. But yeah, now we need to actually show structure in lace. And lace is kind of a, well, I guess the best way to describe it is you do a lot of paraphrasing when trying to show lace. Well, paraphrasing is a, by paraphrasing, I mean scribbling. Mm. 
and a light fabric means a light touch. Although I probably want it a bit thicker of a brush. No, not brush, marker. What am I talking about? Yeah, this one should be fine. Just add a bit of a... We'll say this is, this, uh, is meant for day wear. Let's say a bit of a tie right here. Actually, probably should be a... And we still want to show the airy, light nature of the fabric. So very light, thick strokes. And shoes, naturally. Going very... very sort of fashion-ish here. Is that, no, that's not the right turn. You know what I mean. Trying to show the mood more than anything else, except she's kind of very, you know what I mean. And now we also want to show this bustle too. And this bustle kind of needs to well, it's tied on, so we want it, and it's kind of more of a metallic cage, although it would probably be covered in a some sort of a muslin or other sort of fabric. Or, and maybe with like a twill tape to help hold everything up. So... There'd be like a layer of tape right here, which just helps support everything. And of course it would be like that. Actually holding in the bones into uh, the channels on this, at the end there'd often be decorative embroidery at the top and bottom. I mean decorative, but it also helps make sure that the metal boning is what it's called doesn't shift around and of course you'd have your union suit with straps that are a bit adjustable and the lacing and it's actually two pairs of lacing that meet at the center so that way it's when you pull the pull, it it goes around the natural waist where these cords meet up. So the small of your back, pretty much. So that way you don't end up with a corset that's like cinched grommet to grommet at the bottom and like very wide open at the top or vice versa. Unlike in previous, like the older stays, where it'd just be one cord and it'd be spiral laced. And... Ears are important. Hair. And of course, eyes. Ah, uh, yeah, that looks horrible. Oh well. It is what it is. It shows off how the garment goes on, which is what I was shooting for. And of course, the same sort of, uh, I believe I added insertion lace right here. So the same sort of uh, lace right there. And of course these would be held on by garters. If it, the stockings. Yeah, they, were, they weren't hose, they are stockings. Because, I mean... You want to make sure your stockings don't fall down. That would just be embarrassing. I, mean, I probably should actually... Uh... 
what is it? Oh yeah, like finish coloring in the lace right there. Oh, I guess when I take the picture for social media, I'll just accidentally leave my eraser on her face. Because that, that's not the best face. And she doesn't even have a face. So it's probably about time to sort of at least start to sketch that in. Before we uh, tackle her skirt some more. So, her face. Let's see. I'm probably going to invent, okay, I'm, I'm just going to invent a hat, and it's probably going to be blatantly inaccurate. She'll have a nose, of course. And a smile. And actually, well, she can't really... We'll just say she has her hair in a bun. That's always a safe bet. Buns are... I don't want to say they're universal, but they're a universal cop out in the field of a... drawing clothing. And of course, we actually need to draw the rest of her outfit, too. Very important. I think bonnets were starting to fall out of uh, fashion at this point. Let's go with this dark, dark green right here. Like this. And of course, we can still get a bit of dark for the sleeves. And of course, underneath the arm. But we also want to emphasize that this is a silk. So we want, want to have those light patches too. Oh crap, uh, that was a mistake. Oh well, we'll just take it in a bit. Like this. And wait, that's a cadmium. Remind me to stop wiping my brushes off my hands. That's that's not really good for you. I guess heavy metal poisoning is par for core here on a, a tr in a Tropa Everwood's witch's cottage. What is it? Oh yeah, arsenic and old lace. That's what it is. I wonder if we can get a Boris Karloff in. Okay, please tell me you're familiar with that movie. Well, that play, but it was made into a movie. I believe they had Boris, Boris Karloff in it too. Of course, Boris Karloff was playing a murderer with a... a murderer who had gotten plastic surgery to try and be in inconspicuous with the plastic surgeon had watched a Boris Karlov movie and made the main character look like Boris Karlov. So it's either during one of the st stage productions or, or like in the movie, everybody's just talking about, it. it's like, Hey, you look like Boris Karlov. Just like constantly talking about how the, the eldest Brewster son looks like Boris Karlov now. And of course they, they got at least one of the, either the stage player or the movie, they got Boris Karloff doing it. So everybody's like, hey, hey, you look familiar. Are you Vincent Price? Sorry, sorry, just... And of course, the character would fly into a rage, like, I'm not Boris Karloff, like, I'm not a... Well, the character was like a horrific murderer, but of course, so were... Of course, everybody in that one was... Like, the, the whole... 
not okay the movie's been out for like 100 years no i'm probably exaggerate it's been out for a while so but that the whole thing is the ants are crazy murderesses like the main characters aunties they're they're kind old ladies and whenever they see like an old man widower or anything else all alone they just feel so sorry for him because he's all alone so what else is there to do but put him out of his misery and of course the middle son is crazy and thinks he's a teddy roosevelt so he's working on a building building the panama canal in the unfinished cellar with the dirt floor so whenever they get like a whenever they get another yellow fever victim he dutifully buries them and the the main character is a play reviewer of course that's primarily just so the so the original author of the play can just like absolutely take the piss out of him because well i wonder why playwright would have a grudge against play against critics play critics there's a few guesses there so and he's just worried because he starts to realize that yes everybody in his family is absolutely batshit and it just sort of goes from there like his fi his fiance shows up all that and he finds a dead body which percy thinks is his uh brother who thinks he's teddy roosevelt killed them but then his aunts were like oh no we he's one of our valued guests it's like oh yeah we feel so so sorry for them so we give them a elderflower elderberry wine with a bit extra added in so we can just like oh the poor things but they're better now because they aren't alone anymore it's a comedy i feel i feel the need to point out this play is a comedy hold on they need a skin tone it's a very funny play I recommend it. I think it actually takes place in Halloween, too. I wonder if we could get, like, a bunch of, uh... Probably could get a bunch of VTubers, maybe, to do a read-through. That would be fun. But you have, like, the old lace... It's, it's the place... But the play is called Arsenic and Old Lace. Which I'm reminded, because we have Old Lace and Arsenic right here. Very fun. Very fun play. Very fun movie. I... I recommend the movie this point in history gloves were not as common so we aren't going to bother showing gloves here oh yeah the room that was one but arsenic and old lace would be a fun one for halloween maybe that that would be fun for Halloween. Or leading up to Halloween, maybe. I strongly recommend reading it or watching the movie. Yeah, watch the movie, definitely. It's it's worth it. And let's let's make a Oh crap, that the umbrella yellow. Or the parasol yellow. Who doesn't like a yellow parasol? Be like a Jane from Tarzan. Of course her dress was like canary yellow. Yeah, that actually I, I might have mentioned this somewhere, but anybody ever see like the TV show they made? I, oh I actually that's a good question. I, I can't imagine it's public domain, but if it was, that would be fun to do a watch long for. Maybe at the beginning of October, we could do a watch long if, if it's public domain. That, that would be worth doing. That would be very, very fun. So let's start showing the details on this. We got all the slice up, up here. 
Oh, there should be pin tucks. That's something I forgot. Let's add pin tucks. Everybody loves pin tucks. At least I love pin tucks. And of course, we want to show side seams. Anyways, back to here. All these buttons. Yeah, arsenic and old lace would be a very fun one, though. And we can be super colorful because she's not in mourning like our like last fashion drawing stream. Somewhat puffy sleeves. Maybe a few, maybe a few pools and wrinkles here and there. Oh, Hellraiser. I, yeah, that, that might not be the best thing. But if our second old lace is in the public domain, that would be one we could do. That would be very fun. Ooh, and there'd be... Oh yeah, these had all sorts of darts on these jackets. All sorts of shaping to get that perfect form-fitting. Yeah, these, these jackets are super neat. Or these, like, blouses, bodices. So those are very form-fitting. And then, and then, except for the sleeves, and then the skirt is just draping galore. Just absolutely amazing. Because of pre-Raphaelite influence, if I remember correctly. Because, of course, people see the paintings and everybody's in, like, flowing, gla flo bla flowing gowns and everything. F fabric draping everywhere like classical scenes with kaidons and togas and everybody's like i want to look like that like it's like yeah that that ophelia look is super fashionable let's go for that so art driving fashion because everybody wants to look like everybody wants to look like the lady of shallot or shallot or ophelia or rosalind or any of those other common pre-Raphaelite Raphaelite characters. And of course, eyes are important. This, this brush probably should work just fine. Let's actually get the lips first. And then, hold on, actually, I'm wondering how the ink would work on this paper. Oh, well, we'll find out. Let's go with this green. Might need to wait a little bit for this to dry, but it should look just fine. And that was me. Oh, yeah, plays are weird. Let's go with this brown. I probably should have. Nope, that's not that's not the marker I needed. I need this one. Union suit. Corset. Bustle. Corset and bustle.
Oh, and fully dressed. Oh, bottom. Oh, crap. I, ju I just poured a full glass. Give me a minute. I'm, I'm working on it. I, I swear. Let's just give it a little bit of a that. Oof! How to fix that? That's kind. Of, that's a bit harsh. Don't be so judgmental. Let's get her hair before it's too late. And just the basics should be good enough. Gonna need to wait for that to dry, but we can there's probably other stuff we can do while waiting for things to dry. Maybe one or two fine details I can cover. Yeah, it seems like a lot of times just near the in the end game is just waiting for things to dry. Like that old Towson Van Zant song, waiting ar waiting around to die, waiting around to dry. Sometimes it's, I don't know where this dirty road is taking me. Sometimes I don't know the reason why. Guess I'll forget lots of years, lots of rambling. It's easier than just waiting around to die. And one time friends I have a lot, we even had a pop. We beat her with a belt once, cause she... Oh yeah, it's like watching paint dry. I swear I've referenced that before. That Grim Adventures Billy and Mandy episode with Eris. I don't know why, just that scene with Billy. Oh crap, no, I, I need to actually finish the redeem. Yeah, I'm not like a Professor Bloom who can just shock on a beer. I'm not that young anymore. I mean, I know I know I say forever 17, but you know what I mean. Let's just try and just show wrinkles and other stuff because there'd be a lot of wrinkles and bunching where this corset is pushing down on these, uh... Oh, I can, uh, at least get the eyes... here. Oop, I guess that paint's still a little bit wet. Oh well. We'll manage. So if you're wondering how I dressed uh, in the 1880s when I wasn't being LARPing as a widow, this would be how. Because who doesn't like a nice, fashionable green? Let's get this a bit darker, actually. You can do a bit of a cross-hatching. Just emphasize the shading. And here too. Get this darker.
and we need to show the boning channels and the grommets. Oh wait, she probably would have a lipstick on. Stupid me. Or silly me. She would at least, because I'm a bit vain, I suppose. Maybe a touch of blush. Okay, no, that, that just looks kind of... That, that, uh, that's smudged a bit too much, but, oh well. She is getting an eraser in front, in front of her face for the final, the final for Twitter version of this. There. 1880s undergarments. Just do a little bit more, fill in the ears. This, maybe a little bit of cross hatching here and there. There, there, there. And I think that's, I think that's about it. Hold on, let's just add a little bit more here. And we're done. So that that's under undergarments to full outfit. I, I guess this is pretty much just a... Yeah, this, this is pretty much just me drawing me getting dressed, which is kind of iffy, but... There's much, there's much worse things you can do. So now that we're finished. Yeah, we're, it's, I guess the things are. I, I feel this was a productive stream for the most part. But who should we raid? That's the real question. Hold on. Actually, no, I didn't finish her shoes. But anyways. I say that a lot, but anyways, but anyways, she needs the leather felt in. Oh no, should I, should I wait around for you to get me to down my whole glass of wine? We can, but we can do that while talking about who to raid next, actually. For more details on constructing this, actually, there's a few channels I'd recommend on YouTube. Bernadette Banner has some very fun sew along kind of things that she does. Morgan Donner is another good one. Wait, shade of blue? Where, where's the blue? Please tell, please tell me there's. That that's the best route to go. How to fix? Oh no, that's green. That's a, supposed to be an arsenic grain. I guess this one is, she screwed up her makeup, is showing off for the other, well, it's all me, I guess, but she screwed up her makeup, doesn't realize it, and is showing off her runway pose for the other me's, and doesn't realize that her lipstick is all sorts of smeared and trashy looking. So, that's a bit embarrassing. Actually, that looks better. That, that brings it into proportion. That face is not going to be saved outside of just accidentally covering it. Oh yeah, it's probably the light. 
but it's a very greenish green. If you want to see how horrible my palette looks, I've been using a mix of tube and a... Uh, hold on, get that. Yeah, this is what my palette looks like. I mean, in theory, a little messy. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, that palette has not been cleaned in over half a decade. Like, half of those colors on there have been left on there for a good seven years now. Well, they're, I'm not going to waste paint. Paint is expensive. Do you know how much cadmium yellow cost? That that's a pricey pigment. I might need to clean out that lemon yellow, but Yeah. I mean, as anybody who knows about art can tell you. Oh yeah, of course it can. Cadmium is uh one of the heavy metals. Uh, actually, I mean you know Van Gogh? I mean, he had, he had his actual issues too, but what certainly didn't help was the fact that he had a habit of licking his paintbrushes with the pigments that are used. There's also cinnabar. There's lead white. I mean, paint is not good stuff, like the good paints. Whenever you see something that says hue, that's an attempt to imitate that color, but it's not perfect and it's not the same. So, yeah. So Van Gogh was getting that. Then also Van Gogh was a uh, kind of cheap when it came to buying his uh. Okay, so despite what people say, proper absinthe is not that psychotropic. Psychotropic. But there was a very large market for cheap knockoff absinthe. Which would be, uh, which of course would be adulterated with different copper elements, which was also another common pigment, which adds a green, which was to get the green absinthe color. But of course, copper poisoning also causes issues, including like causing like a halo to appear around light source. Oh yeah, the proper stuff is fine. I, I, I actually enjoy the proper stuff. I don't drink it that often because it has a very strong anise flavor. But the proper stuff was fine. But the sketchy, like, dive bar absinthe made with copper. Well, copper poisoning, all sorts of side effects. Like, the interesting one is it causes, like, a haze around seeing light sources. Which is really interesting if you take a look at Starry Night. The painting Starry Night. But of course, all that is moot if you're... I mean, I'm sure you're all familiar with the story that he killed himself. Which... By shooting himself in the stomach. Which, of course, doesn't add up if you look at the angle of the gunshot wound. Which kind of implies that... Of course, it took him a while to before he actually passed away. So he was the one who said he shot himself. But... That story doesn't actually match up. And they were somewhat aware of this even at the time. But of course, it was Van Gogh. He had a reputation. I mean, he cut off his ear and gave it to a prostitute. That, that, that's pretty kind of extreme. He had been in and out of insane asylums, all sorts of issues, seeing weird hazes around sources of light. So if he, go, if he shows up saying he shot himself... People are going to believe him, even though there's no he could have visit. Well, the thing is, he probably was covering for, for a friend. No, Rusty Shackelford, I strongly recommend against it. Actually, you probably should you probably should stop throwing pocket sand in people's eyes too. But, but since he most likely he was covering for a friend. He, like, everything seems to suggest it was an accidental discharge 
from a friend into his stomach. And he didn't want his friend to get in trouble, so he's like, oh, oh yeah, that, that, that was totally my fault. Not, not, to make light, uh, not to make light of serious issues, but ironically, Van Gogh most likely didn't kill himself. He, he had issues, and there's no doubt that he felt suicidal, but it's kind of, it's, I mean, I don't want to offend anybody, but it's kind of ironic where at the end of the day, he most likely was covering for a, for a friend at the, like, in his last moments, which is actually kind of touching. But at the same time, that's kind of like his friend kind of just was like, well, that, that's, well, I guess we don't know exactly what happened. We just have forensic evidence. Oh no, the pro the problem is, actually, no, that's not the problem. That, like, that like that kind of history stuff is kind of weird, like kind of interesting though. Where they give modern forensic scientists like historic cases with information redacted, and ask, okay, how did this person die? Like Edgar Allan Poe, most likely died of rabies. I mean, we don't know how he got rabies in the street of. Actually, no, it's the streets of Baltimore. Getting rabies is probably par for course. So, yeah, no, there, there's actually not that much of, in, much, much of mystery there. Oh, yeah, no, it, it was it was all from the it was all from the used car dealership people in Baltimore. Fuck you, Baltimore. The shit. What was, what was the name of the dealership? Home of challenge. No, we're oh, home of challenge pissing. That's right, challenge pissing. <laughs> yeah, big bill hells. <laughs> yeah, Balt Baltimore isn't the nicest city speaking as somebody who may or may not have a uh, gotten drunk one or two times in downtown baltimore or somebody who may or may not have a uh, drank absinthe at midnight on edgar Allan poe's grave which i didn't do because that would be bad and illegal so that's stuff i've never done but yeah, Baltimore is not the nicest place. You have like all sorts of create, yeah, like all sorts of what well, people call it body more. And it, it's, I mean, I guess there are some parts of it that are pretty cool, but even the cool parts, I mean, like that graveyard across the street from the VA hospital. Yeah, uh, yeah, oh yeah, like the VA hospital is right across the street from Edgar Allan Poe's grave. Like you can park. Like, if you have an appoint appointment and you walk out with parking, you can literally park right next to Poe's grave and go see your doctor about your uh, tinnitus, hypothetically. But yeah, but even then, even this, despite the fact that they lock the gates at, like, dusk, you still get random hooligans sneaking in and leaving cognac randomly and a rose that... Like that that's just like downright hooliganish. I, I used I, I might just use the word hooligan too much. And then you get people drinking absinthe on the grave at midnight. Damn kids. How dare you? So yeah, it it maybe not the best town. Let's get that a bit darker actually. dry brush right there i don't know why but the specific brand like these this cheap princeton neptune number four round is like my favorite oh yeah i remember being young like way back centuries ago of course i'm forever 17 so it's okay Where was I? Actually, yeah, probably get out in. 
That's an idea. Wait, where did all my blues go? Oh no, I, th I think after over half a decade, I finally used up my blues. Okay, there's my cerulean. Sorry, what? Use up all my blue paints. Well, okay, not all the blue paints I have, all the blue paints I had on uh, my palette. Crap, I might need to actually... Oh yeah, raid targets. Yeah, that, that's what I was doing. Raid targets. So, any potential raid targets? Let's see who's active. Who's available? Akiyaji Margo. Bad at Games is streaming. Shouldn't do too much cloud chasing. Plus Margo. Oh, oh, if you... You can uh, go back and watch the VODs on Professor Bloom's channel, actually. As a... Uh, we had that collab... Like, collaborate... That was why I wasn't on my channel Monday, is because we had the collaboration with Professor Bloom for his uh, VTuber choir for the alto section. Ape Escape also sounds like fun. So actually, Margo is probably the best choice. And yeah, so we both were doing that. I, I kind of wasn't talking too much because I'm kind of actually kind of anti-social. I'm not the most social person one-on-one -on -one or in groups. So. So yeah, Margo was there too. And a few other people. Be sure to check them out too. And watch the stream. Yeah, I'm a bit on the shy side, I suppose. Until you start talking about clothing and then I freak out and start talking about like, oh, that outfit's horrible and stuff, despite the fact that I'll probably be wearing like ratty jeans and a metal band t-shirt. Iron Maiden, probably. So let's go raid Margo. Oh, Bloom just got... Eh, wait, crap. Why is, why is it doing this? Let's, okay, let's raid uh, Margo. Ready? And let's go. Start raid. For some, for some reason, it played an ad when I hit raid, so it's kind of weird. Thanks, and have a nice night. And... The coven is upon you. Shall be the raid. Should be the raid message. Ready? Go. Wait, crap! I need to actually 